The phasing in would begin with the youngest pupils, while the majority of secondary school pupils will not attend class until September at the earliest. The announcement has drawn criticism from teaching unions who have raised concerns over managing social distancing, especially with young children. Joining us now is the Joint General Secretary for the National Education Union, uh, Kevin Courtney. Hello to you. Thank you for joining us on the programme this morning, Mr Courtney. Um, there was a tweet yesterday from one of your colleagues, Dr Mary Bowstead, saying, I am amazed at the recklessness and incompetence of this government. Why are they being reckless in particular, would you say? Uh, it's reckless. It's irresponsible. Uh, Mary and I wrote to the government on the 1st of May asking them to talk with us before making any announcement, to get the science out there where people can see it, peer-reviewed about whether this would be safe or not. They've just ignored that. They've ignored three letters that we've sent them about the science. We published a report about those questions recently. They, they made this announcement last night with no consultation with heads or with teachers before making the announcement. It's caused great consternation. We've surveyed our members last night. Within an hour, 49,000 teachers responded to our survey, with the vast, vast majority of them saying they think it's unsafe. That is an irresponsible way for the government to go around announcing these sorts of questions. And we don't agree that it is safe for schools to reopen. We are not, well, absolutely not convinced by the government's statements on that. But with respect, they, uh, we've heard from the Prime Minister and uh, leading politicians, they always say to us during those uh, daily news conferences, don't they, that they're following the science. And so that then uh, follows that um, it must be the scientists who are telling them that it is safe for schools to start to reopen. Well, we've been offered individual conversations with Chris Whitney. We'd like to have them, but individual conversations are not good enough. We've sent a report to the government which outlines many international studies which say that children are transmitters of the disease, which says that there are lots of vulnerable adults who could be badly affected, which says that social distancing continues to be really important. The government is not responding to those things. We want to get back to school. We want the lockdown to end. We want that to happen as soon as it safely can. And we are not being irresponsible. We've set five sensible tests. The government hasn't passed its own five tests yet. And that's, I think, very important. But we've set five sensible tests that we think need to be in place and we think would allow schools to open safely. So we've said the case count in the country needs to be down low enough so that contact tracing can take over some of the work of social isolation. But the case count is nowhere near those sorts of levels. They haven't recruited their 18,000 contact tracers, which wouldn't be enough. They don't have the app working. They aren't ready for that. We've said our second test is they need to have a plan for social distancing in schools. They've come up with nothing on that. This suggestion that uh, reception year one and year two go back in 700 schools in the country, the infant schools, that's the big majority of, of children in those schools. How can you possibly do social distancing when the big majority of children in classes of 30 or more are back in the school? It makes no sense. We've said they need to have testing available because otherwise you don't know if it's running in your school. That's testing for teachers. That They haven't made that work. We don't think the swab test will be good for children. It's too upsetting. But there needs to be temperature testing, sym symptomatic testing. They have no plan for that and they won't get that rolled out by the 1st of June. We've said they need a plan. If there's a case in the school, what do you then do? Do you close the, the whole class down? Do you close the whole school down? We've been given no science on that. How can we be planning now when they haven't given us any of those things? OK, so you don't okay. want the kids to go back until it's, it's safer. I completely understand that. Um, you also, as a union, have told teachers that recorded and live streamed classes should be kept to a minimum while schools are closed. Why? Our members are in school, working on school rotors, supporting, teach, supporting the, the children of key workers, putting themselves in harm's way doing that. They're at home preparing lessons for children. They're at home running, ringing round vulnerable children. I, I, I know the story you're talking about is an attack piece in the Daily Telegraph, which absolutely hates my union for no good reason. We are being sensible and reasonable. But our concern about live streaming lessons is that we are getting cases reported to us of members who have been doing that where those lessons are, are used. Okay. 
Mr Courtney, let's not make it personal about the Daily Telegraph. I'm giving you the opportunity to answer the question about why you are saying to your members that they shouldn't stream classes um, while schools are closed. So kids are not yeah. supposed to be going to school while schools are closed no. over the summer break, let's say that. What, what, why shouldn't they have uh, classes so, streamed? Uh, we are living in very uncertain times. Absolutely. And as I said, our members are, uh, our members are preparing lessons they're ringing round, they're talking to children, they're talking to parents. Live streaming lessons have some real security questions. There are some real questions about privacy that come up with that. We, and our members are doing everything they possibly can. This is an attack piece. I make no apologies for saying it's an attack piece. It's meant to undermine the fact that we are saying that schools shouldn't go back until they're safe. We think that what we're talking about is the fastest safe way out of lockdown. We think people should look to what New Zealand did, where Jacinta Ardern said you had to go hard, you had to go early to drive the case number down. We're very worried okay. that what the government is doing now will lead to a spike in cases. We don't want that to be situated in our schools.